Mwale. Can you tell us what Kadesa is about? Okay, thank you. Kadesa is a, a center for coordination of agricultural research and development for Southern Africa. It's a subsidiary organization of uh, SADC and it was created in 2010. Kadesa was formed specifically to coordinate agricultural research and development work in order to translate the policies of uh, SADC into practical actions at the member state level and in the process to contribute to uh, the livelihoods and the food security in the communities. So our areas of uh, intervention in the SADC member states, they range from supporting the actual research and generation of technologies to dissemination of those technologies within the farming communities. In the process, we are interested in uplifting the living standards of the people and also contributing to the agenda that the SADC Secretariat has set within the area of food, agriculture and natural resources. In doing so, there are a number of uh, policy uh, documents that, we, that shape our actions. For example, the Regional Indicative Strategic Development Plan of uh, SADC, there is a Regional Agricultural Policy of uh, SADC, and other documents as well at the regional level, as well as at the level of the, the AU, such as the uh, Comprehensive Agricultural uh, development program, the CADI. So there are a number of uh, uh, policies that shape our actions, but what we do is mainly to contribute to improving the uh, food security of the people of SADC. Okay, uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, whilst we're still on that, on what Kadesa is about, um, would you care to share with us the current program that you guys are doing to make sure that uh, the SADA communities, they adapt to the effects of climate change in terms of food security. Are there any specific programs that you guys are doing? Yes, there are a number of things that we are doing, but to, to start with, let me also refer to the documents of SADA. The Regional Agricultural Policy, the RAP, has specific sections that explain what the region is supposed to do in the adaptation to climate change. And the CADESA programs that we do have certain components that target specifically on contributing to adaptation of the farmers to climate change. This is in terms of the technologies that they have to make use of and also the farming systems, the management practices within the farm, farming community that they have to change in order to make use of those uh, management practices and technologies that make them resilient and make their farming systems to adapt to the changes that take place within the, the Southern African region. And uh, in addition to that, um, we know that climate change is a new phenomenon. And uh, the farmers may take long to, to realize that they have to change their farming systems. So in this context, one of the areas that we get involved in is the provision of information the training of uh, the farmers themselves as well as the people involved in the extension as well as the research because at the end of the day it is the collective action of the extension the researchers and the farmer that will bring change at the farm level oh, okay so um the programs that you guys are currently doing to, to make sure that those policies and uh, strategies are implemented, uh, who are, who are the, the, the partners that are funding these programs? There are a number of uh, uh, partners that we work with and in terms of funding we've received funding from different sources. Uh, I wouldn't list all of them. But for example, there is a, a World Bank, we've received money from the World Bank, we've received money from the European Union, we've received money from the German Technical Corporation through the GIZ, and we are currently working with all these uh, partners. But in the past, we've also received money from the USAID, for example, and uh, other similar organizations. So th these are some of the partners that have worked with us.
and we I would like to appreciate the support that they've given to the people of Southern Africa through Kandesa, the GIZ, the, the World Bank, the EU. It's good that you mentioned about the GIZ because right now we're actually having Hannah here with us uh, from GIZ. Hannah, welcome to our TST Dialogues. Uh, would, you care to t uh, would you tell our online audience um, uh, what GIZ is really uh, doing in terms of uh, the funding of these programs and which countries are really benefiting from it? And uh, yeah, basically that. Thank you very much. Also, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mwale, for appreciating the support. We also do appreciate a lot our collaboration, which we have since 2015 in the program called Adaptation to Climate Change in Rural Areas in Southern Africa. And uh, maybe first let me say that GIZ is not, uh, in a true sense, the funding partner. We are a technical implementing agency that is implementing development cooperation efforts, mostly on behalf of the German government, but also on behalf of other partners and other programs, such as the European Union or other development partners, or even sometimes countries. So here we started in 2015, and we very closely collaborate with CADESA. We are also based at CADESA. Uh, on trying to assist um, the member states of SADC and CADESA at the same time to consider climate change in their agricultural investments and also to, if possible, attract additional finance to actually invest because climate change is increasingly threatening food security in the region. The World Food Programme just two days ago did a very... Um, like. Yeah, presentation that was quite severe. The data is quite alarming of what they said and how far the number of people suffering from food insecurity is increasing and that can mainly be related to number one conflicts but number two is immediately climate change. So there is a severe period of drought which is extended over many years in many countries and also we had the, the cyclones in uh, Mozambique and the neighboring countries damaging a lot of food crops. So what we, what we do together with CADESA is we, we have two main components. The first one is looking at improving the information, communication and knowledge management system together so that we collate and collect best practices from partners, from the countries, from ourselves, from our own programs, what we do, and try to uh, set up a system where we can disseminate it and exchange on good practices so that these are available to, to researchers, to extension farmers, it's basically about transferring the knowledge that's generated to the farmer into extension. That's the first component. The second component is um, so-called climate proofing of agricultural value chains. So what we mean there is that we look at uh, major commodities in the region, such as maize, sorghum, livestock, rangelands, and do comprehensive climate risk analysis. And we did that with those three value chains in different country setups because we can't serve 16 countries unfortunately at the same time no? um, but covering quite many of the countries and then um, pilot uh, best practices on the ground as well in some instances for example in maize in Malawi, Zambia and Zimbabwe um, prioritize which climate smart adaptation technologies work best and come up with feasibility studies to ultimately develop investment proposals that should assist the countries in achieving higher productivity, better climate resilience of the farmers, especially the small-scale farmers, and as well mitigate greenhouse gas emissions. So that's what we are doing. Thanks. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, it's, I'm glad that you mentioned about the things that you're currently doing. I, I also want to know, um, Maybe the, the, the milestone that you've done uh, ever since you guys started uh, helping in, in, in these projects, maybe you can just highlight a few what you've managed to achieve. Yeah, thank you. So I think one important milestone for CADESA and us was that uh, the new CADESA knowledge management system was launched last year in November in Maputo and that through that also the number of users are steadily increasing. I'm sorry, I don't have the figures with me right now, but it's actually increasing at the moment quite exponentially, which we are all very happy about because it means that there's more exchange happening. More, more, more and more people look at Cardessa's webpage, more and more people also upload their own content from their country. So in all of the, I think out of the 16 member states, I think 11 have nominated also focal points to work with us. 
um, exchanging this knowledge. So that's that's great. Um, and then in terms of the other component with the climate proofing, I think the most successful value chain so far has been the maize one, where we work together with Simit. Simit is based in Zimbabwe. Um, and they've done quite a bit of great work to do the comprehensive climate risk analysis. They could identify quite clearly down to specific uh, eco -agro agrological seasons or regions within the country um, where it is feasible to continue with the production of maize, where it might not be feasible in the long term, where you might have to diversify or shift to other crops such as uh, uh, sorghum. Um, they've developed quite many good practices together with us on how to improve productivity of maize by intercropping it with legumes, for example, or using agroforestry or agriculture conservation techniques. And then also we think the Herding for Health project will bring some interesting results. Okay. Oh yeah, thank you very much for that. Dr. Monica Murata, I understand that you're coordinating the APSA program. Can you also share uh, more about uh, what APSA program is all about and ever since you started implementing it, how, what have you achieved and what is your vision? What do you intend on accomplishing maybe in a specific period of time? Uh, thank you very much. APSA is an acronym. Uh, it stands for Agricultural Productivity Program for Southern Africa. This is a project which is uh, funded by the World Bank and it came about because the major objective uh, of APSA is to increase the availability of improved technologies in the region. As we are aware, there are so many good uh, technologies that have been developed, but some of them they've been sit sitting on the shelves for quite, quite some time. So we really need to roll out those technologies so that farmers are able to, to, to make a choice from whatever we are, we are sharing with them. So this is a project which started in 2013. It started with three countries, which is Malawi, Mozambique, and Zambia. But the hope is that... Um, other countries would also be joining. So each of the countries were get, was getting a credit facility from the World Bank to undertake the project, which has got, I'll talk about two key components. The first one is on um, technology generation and dissemination. This is where we are having countries, researchers coming together to undertake collaborative research. So we have a principal investigator maybe in Zambia, and then you we have co-principal investigators in Mozambique and Zambia, they are working on the same problem and sharing the results. So we have had to date about 74 collaborative projects between the three countries. And these projects, they've been um, addressing most of the key research issues which have been prioritized not just within their national countries, but within the region at large. Uh, so we have those, and um, to date I'm happy to report that from the work that has been undertaken in all those three countries, we have managed to reach out to almost 3 million beneficiaries in the three countries. We have managed to, uh, to disseminate 301 technologies uh, to the farmers in the three countries. We have managed to develop quite uh, a significant number of uh, improved varieties, which are drought tolerant, which are disease tolerant, and we also even have under maize some of those quality protein maize, the orange maize. Uh, we have uh, quite a number of varieties that have been released, and we are hoping that whatever these technologies, the new technologies that are coming up, they are not just benefiting those three countries, but we are hoping for a spillover effect within the rest of the region, so that they are also able to take up those technologies as well. The second component, it has been on our capacity strengthening. As you know, our scientists, we need to, to keep abreast of the science, improve the quality of science in the region. So the countries have also been uh, uh, sending the scientists for further training. And to date, we have uh, sent uh, 77, we have already completed uh, their training, long-term training. This is at master's and PhD level. But we had a total number, it was 100 and 134. Uh, scientists that have been sent for further training. And besides building the capacity of the scientists, we've also been looking at the operating environment itself. So it's improving the infrastructure at the research stations where they are working. So it was a question of looking at uh, improving the laboratory facilities, um, the offices, uh, the, 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 the whatever road infrastructure, irrigation equipment and so forth, so that the scientists, they have an enabling environment which will facilitate 
you know, um, uh, production of uh, those uh, scientific outputs which you are looking for, the quality of science, innovative science, which is what we are looking for. So this is what has been happening. In those three countries, the way we have been working is that each country was, sub was electing to be a leader in one of the commodities, way, which is not only of national uh, importance, but also of regional importance. So Malawi opted to be the regional center of leadership for maize-based cropping systems. Zambia opted for food legume-based cropping systems, whereas Mozambique is taking the lead in rice research. And um, I'm happy to, 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 to report that to date. We also have new, two new countries which are going to join uh, the program. This is uh, Angola, which is going to take the lead in um, cassava-based um, farming systems, and Lesotho, which is going to take the lead in horticulture. And we are hoping that more countries will come on board so that all the key commodities in the region can actually be um, uh, addressed and led by each country in the region. Once we do that, I'm sure that we will go far in the research and development uh, interventions. Okay, that was quite detailed. Uh, uh, Dr. Mwali, you want to add? <laughs> yes, I would like to add maybe one or two things. The first one is that uh, what my colleagues have talked about is uh, just some of the successes that we've had. But there have been a number of other uh, things that Kadesa has done. And some of this information, you can find it on our website, which is now revamped. And we have a very strong uh, agricultural information system. But I also wanted to add one more thing, that um, we've had a lot of experience since Cadesa was created. There are a number of lessons that we have learned, and we are using those lessons now to reposition Cadesa for the next 10 years. And currently we are developing our strategic plan, which will run from 2020 to 2029, a 10-year uh, strategic plan. And in that plan, the issue of uh, adaptation to climate change is coming out very strongly, so Cadesa will have a very strong presence in that area. And in the area of generation of technologies, Cadesa is also going to strengthen what we are going to do in the generation and dissemination of technologies. And uh, we are also strengthening the capacity building. And uh, just one more thing about, since we are sitting in uh, Windhoek and we are in Namibia, maybe it's important for you to know that we've had also work being done in Namibia. One of the things that we did was a, 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 a survey in the Omusati region of northern Namibia, where we're looking at the constraints associated with uh, livestock production. And during this meeting of ministers, we presented a poster which clearly shows that uh, feeding is one of the major uh, problems of uh, livestock production in that area. And uh, the government can easily now take a look at that and put up uh, policy measures that can reduce that, uh, the impact of those problems.